one of the most iconic helicopters of the past 50 years. The Boeing AH-64 Apache helicopter has carved out a name for itself as one of the most deadly tools in the arsenal of the United States military. The Apache's revolutionary technology and immense firepower makes it feared amongst all of America's enemies. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into what's made the Apache such a legendary and beloved part of America's aviation toolbox. Before we get started, however, we ask that you consider liking the video if you find it entertaining, and if you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. The need for an assault helicopter like the Apache can be traced back to the 1948 Key West Agreement. The Key West Agreement was a policy drafted by the first Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal. In this policy, the separation of aviation duties between the different branches of the military were officially outlined. One important point in the Key West Agreement forbade the Army from having fixed-wing aircraft that could be used for close air support in combat operations. For the next several decades, the Army was under the impression that if it wanted to have its own close air support fighter craft, it would have to be a rotary blade helicopter. The Army wanted an aircraft that packed tons of firepower, range, and had the ability to conduct a low-altitude flight. So in 1972, the Advanced Attack Helicopter Program was made public, and proposals were submitted by the biggest names in aviation, such as Bell, Boeing, Hughes, Grumman, and Lockheed. Each company came up with prototypes to try and impress the Army, but in the end, the Hughes YAH-64A prototype emerged as the winner as it demonstrated the ability to tolerate more damage and remain more stable during landings than its competitors. In the following years, Hughes prototype helicopter was put through a multitude of test flights and mock combat scenarios. Revolutionary new weapon systems were also developed during this time, including the laser-guided Hellfire missile. A fun fact is that the term Hellfire is derived from the phrase helicopter launched fire and forget missile. The Army was impressed with the prototype's test runs, but still decided to make a few tweaks before official production began. For one, the engine was upgraded to a 1700 horsepower General Electric motor. The name of the helicopter was also finalized. It would be called the AH-64 Apache, named after the Apache Native American tribe. In 1982, the Apache was approved for full-scale production, and the first of its kind finished production in 1983 in Mesa, Arizona. Hughes Helicopter Company was later purchased by McDonnell Douglas in 1984 for over a billion dollars when adjusted for inflation, and in 1997, McDonnell Douglas was acquired by Boeing, leaving us with the Boeing AH-64 Apache attack helicopter. The Apache saw combat for the first time in 1989 during Operation Just Cause in Panama. During its service in Panama, the Apache logged over 240 hours of operation. Many commanding officers praised the Apache for its ability to shoot a Hellfire missile through a window from four miles away. The Apache saw more action when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in 1989. During Operation Desert Storm, eight Apaches were responsible for disabling various Iraqi radio installations, which allowed other attack aircraft to go undetected by Iraqi forces. Apaches in Desert Storm were able to record over 500 kills. Unfortunately, one Apache was shot down during the operation by a standard RPG, serving as a reminder that even the most advanced pieces of aircraft are not invulnerable. While the Apache proved itself as heavily effective in combat, some of its flaws did come to light during the Gulf War. Maintenance issues were common in Apaches, so much so that all Apaches not participating in the Gulf War were grounded in order to free up spare parts. Apaches flew for only one-fifth of their planned flight time in the Gulf War so that maintenance staff could keep up with the mechanical problems. These issues would persist into the early 2000s. Dick Cody, the 101st Airborne's commanding officer in the year 2000, even wrote a scathing review of the Apache, citing its never-ending mechanical problems and lack of qualified pilots. To make matters worse, the Department of Defense audit in 2011 discovered that Boeing had been overcharging the U.S. Army for spare Apache parts. Reports confirmed that Boeing had increased their prices by values of up to 177,000% when negotiating with the U.S. Army. Boeing agreed to pay over a million dollars in refunds, but this was a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of taxpayer money that was determined to be wasted. Nevertheless, the Apache would go on to play a key role in the global war on terror, 
During Operation Anaconda in Afghanistan in 2002, the Apache was the only aerial vehicle available to the Army that could provide accurate close air support. The Apache was also heavily involved in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. During an attack on an armored brigade, 31 Apaches were damaged after they were lured into a flat trap by the Iraqi Republican Guard. One of these Apaches was shot down with both pilots being captured. Due to the Apaches' demonstrated susceptibility to enemy fire, the decision was made in 2006 to exclude Apaches in attacks deep inside enemy lines. Several variants of the Apache were manufactured during its development. The AH-64A was the initial Apache model that was finally taken out of service in 2012. The AH-64B was the first proposed upgraded model of the Apache. This upgraded model sported new rotor blades, a GPS system, and newer radios. The AH-64B model was canceled before it could start major production, however, when the AH-64C model was developed in just a year. This AH-64C model was also canceled when even more upgrades were developed and Boeing settled on the AH-64D Longbow. Say what you want about Boeing, their engineers work fast. The AH-64D variant featured Hellfire missiles with increased firepower and the ability to automatically deploy countermeasures that increased the Apache's overall survivability. The Longbow also came equipped with highly advanced targeting systems housed in the little dome on top of the main rotor. The AH-64E Guardian was developed next by Boeing. The Guardian was given an even more powerful engine, one that was so powerful, in fact, that the hardware that interfaced with the engine had to be completely replaced. The rotor blades were also made of a new composite material that allowed for increased speed, climb rates, and payload capacity. The AH-64F model was then conceptualized, but has never been manufactured. This conceptual upgrade would give the Apache a new 3,000 horsepower engine, retractable landing gear, and an adjustable tail rotor that can rotate 90 degrees to provide forward thrust. As of now, there are currently four main Apache variants in service, each equipped with different engines that range in power from 1,700 horsepower to 2,100 horsepower. Both the main and tail rotors sport four blades, with the main blades being roughly 22 feet long, giving the main rotor system a diameter of about 44 feet. The Apache is flown by two pilots, with the main pilot sitting above and behind the co-pilot or gunner. Both crew members are able to fly and operate weapon systems independently of each other. A blast shield is placed between the two pilots so that one of the pilots may still survive a direct hit to the cockpit. In most Apaches, two General Electric T-700 engines power the aircraft. These turboshaft engines are designed to create as much horsepower around the main rotating shaft as possible. The rotator blades and crew compartment are both able to withstand impacts from rounds of up to 23 millimeters. However, it is important to note that not all vital components of the helicopter can be armored, so the Apache is not technically immune to small arms fire. The Apache can operate effectively at a maximum altitude of 19,400 to 21,000 feet depending on temperature and air density. For reference, commercial airliners typically fly between 30,000 and 40,000 feet. Possibly the most revolutionary feature of the Apache is its targeting system. The helmet-mounted sight of the Apache allows either pilot to aim the Apache's 30 millimeter chain gun by simply moving their head. The first aircraft to use the targeting system was the F-4 Phantom in the early 70s, but the Apache is the first helicopter to use the same targeting system. The 30mm chain gun can also be fixed in a forward-facing position or can be incorporated with the more automated and modern targeting system developed by Lockheed Martin. A fun fact is that in order to be considered a proficient gunner by the U.S. Army, training pilots must achieve at least one hit for every 30 rounds fired at a target from a range of about 1,000 meters. In addition to the 30mm chain gun, the Apache is equipped with a variety of weapons that pack even more firepower. Some combination of Hellfire anti-tank missiles and Hydra unguided rockets are given to an Apache depending on its current mission. The Hellfire missile is able to destroy moving or stationary tanks from a range of over 4 miles or 6.5 kilometers. Separate UAV scouting aircraft are also able to be controlled from the cockpit of an Apache. If an Apache crew wants to safely scout a forward area, they simply request permission to commandeer any nearby drones. If the drones are equipped with laser target designators, the Apache pilots can even mark the locations of high priority targets. This method of scouting proved to be so effective and efficient in fact that in 2014 the OH-58 Kiowa was retired as the Army's standard scouting helicopter in favor of teams made up of Apaches and UAV aircraft. 
make the Apache's available arsenal even more impressive. Boeing has even suggested that small laser weapons could be equipped onto the Apache. In 2017, Boeing developed a small weapon that uses a high-resolution telescope to direct a high-powered beam out to range of about 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers. This weapon could be used to destroy enemy radar or radio equipment. While the Apache is designated for use by the Army, it uses the same radio system as the U.S. Air Force and the Marine Corps, allowing the Apache to engage in joint operations with the Air Force's A-10 Thunderbolts and the Marines' AV-8B Harriers. The future of the Apache remains to be seen. It proved itself to be an invaluable asset to America in the Middle East conflicts, and while there have been some new assault helicopters rumored to be in development by competitors, we can say with certainty that the Apache will continue to provide unparalleled air support to American troops for the coming years.